Hi everybody, my name is Dave Marsh and I'd like to welcome you to this Matrix version 6.0 search tutorial. Now before I begin, I'd like to mention that because each MLS has slightly different requirements, the system that we'll be using for this tutorial may differ slightly from the one that you're currently working with. Nevertheless, the functionality is the same and for the most part, whatever you see during this tutorial, you'll easily recognize in your own system. Now I'm going to take for granted that everyone knows how to log into the system, so we'll start by inserting our user ID and our password and click login to begin. Now that will immediately take you to the Matrix homepage, but because this is a search tutorial, we'll click or hover over the search tab where we're immediately presented with several available property types to search. Now there are a few different ways we can go about finding listings for a client. So let's begin by taking a look at the standard old familiar approach and that's by plugging information directly into the search criteria section. And what I'm going to do is take you through these options one by one so we can explore them each individually. And then at the end, I'll put them all together and we'll create a search to demonstrate how all these different search criteria work together. So let's start out with the search status, which represents the status of the property that you're searching. And to select a status during a specific period, click on the date icon, then select your range by choosing two days from the calendar. Underneath status in this system are the property types. And remember, to select multiple options from any list box, simply hold down the control key while clicking on an item. You'll also notice as well that you can choose to either include any of your selections or not include your selections. By default, your search will return any or. From here, we can also choose to include locations, styles, and there are several ways that we can enter price criteria. For example, you can either use a specific value or you might use a price range. Values are in the thousands of dollars. For example, 200 plus would return all properties $200,000 and over. 200 minus returns properties $200,000 and less, and 200 to 300 will return properties that are $200,000 to $300,000. And if, for example, you would like to include specific criteria that isn't currently displayed, simply click the additional fields link at the bottom, then choose the fields that you'd like to add. Now these fields are taken from the listing input section, so whatever an agent can input, of course will also be available to search in the additional fields. Okay, so now that your criteria is complete, if you'd ever like to save it as a starting point each time you do a search, just click the settings icon and set it as your default. But for now, let's begin a brand new search from scratch and we'll reset my criteria to the system default. Alright, so let's assume that one of my clients, Mr. Weiser, is looking for a single family residential property priced between two million and three million five hundred thousand dollars with two plus bedrooms and three plus bathrooms and before I even view my results I can already see that there are currently 435 matches alright so let's go ahead and do a search either by clicking results on the button bar or directly on the results tab. And from here, we can easily switch, for example, to another view such as single line. And once your display and count per page has been selected, you can make it your default view from the settings icon. Okay, from here, simply click any of the MLS links to display the full listing. All right, so that's one way of viewing results. Of course, another way is by clicking on the map tab and from here, we also have the same full control over all the listings that we had in the results tab with the added advantage of actually being able to visualize where the listings are on a map. But let's assume that now Mr. Weiser is only interested in listings that are a short walk from the water. Well, we can easily include or exclude as many locations as we need using the map shape tools. So let's, for example, choose the radius to include this area the rectangle to include this area 
And finally, because we may want to avoid this part of town, we'll use the Polygon tool to exclude all listings in this area. So with our updated listings, let's zoom in and take a closer look at one of these properties. Alright, so this looks exactly like something my client might be interested in. And now with the ruler tool, I'll verify the walking distance by measuring precisely how far the property is from the water. Okay, so now by using the single check mark icon, we can either individually select the listings I'm interested in, or use the multiple check mark icon and select several listings at once. And once selected, I can now use the button bar to accomplish several other listing functionalities. For example, let's click directions for detailed turn-by-turn -turn driving directions to each of the properties. In fact, the map will even reconfigure the most efficient route if I decide to change the order or the starting point. Alright, while each of these search features are great, what I'd really like to demonstrate is the third and perhaps most exciting method of doing a search, and that's by using our advanced speed bar. And what the speed bar does essentially is use a simple Google-like approach to allow the agent to enter shorthand criteria determined by the MLS from anywhere in the system to quickly find results. But even more than that, agents can also make their own custom shorthand, and I'll demonstrate this by creating a specific area on the map and then save it as a speed bar shortcut. So with no criteria selected, let's click on the map tab and carefully isolate the area that I'd like to work with. Okay, so once that's complete, I'll navigate to the button bar click on save then new speed bar shortcut and I'm going to call this near water preceded by the forward slash now you can call it whatever you think best fits your needs but it must be preceded by a forward slash because that's what represents it as a speed bar shortcut when you type it into your speed bar in the future so let me illustrate this by creating a brand new speed bar search from scratch and remember I can use the speed bar from anywhere in the system, so I'll demonstrate this by returning to our home page. And from here, I'll enter the following shorthand criteria. Active, single family, between two million and three million five hundred thousand dollars, with two plus bedrooms and three plus bathrooms. And at this point, it might be worth mentioning that these speed bar shortcuts can be entered in any order, with the exception of bedrooms and bathrooms, where bedrooms must always come first. Okay, so with our criteria entered, let's click on the search icon, and again we see too many results. Well, we know our client, Mr. Weiser, is only interested in listings within a short walking distance to the water. So this time, instead of redrawing the general area, Let's enter my predefined speed bar shortcut from earlier, preceded by the forward slash, to more accurately isolate the locations. And from here, we can again choose which listings we would like to work with on the button bar. Another useful feature of the speed bar is for quickly finding agent contact information. So simply by adding the word agent, followed by either a full name, a last name, or even a partial last name. We can easily display a list of all agents in the system who fit that criteria. Okay, one last thing I'd like to mention before we complete this tutorial is the recent search drop-down box which is located to the right of the speed bar text box. This drop-down box contains a chronological list of your most recent searches complete with date time stamp as well as the number of results displayed. You'll definitely find this a useful tool if you like to multitask while conducting searches or just to pick up a search from where you left off before previously logging out of Matrix. Okay, so that concludes our Matrix search tutorial. I'd like to thank you for watching and hope that you can join me in another session. Take care.